This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Welcome to the first week of potting along to the great Canadian throwdown. Our judges would like you to create a tribute to your hometown, be it where you were born or where you live now. You will be judged on your concept, creativity, and your execution of your technical skills. You saw the title of this video, I'm going to be making my childhood home. I'm very lucky that I grew up in the same house my whole life until I moved out. And I have so much love and memories of this house, which itself is a very unique home. And if I have time, I would love to add like some interior details to really bring it to life. So I'm starting with some slabs and I'm putting them in front of the fan to harden up because I need them to be firm instead of floppy or my house is just going to end up a collapsed blob. spontaneous decision and decided to curve the platform a little bit because the house is actually on a hill, but this is going to mess this up a little bit. So I think I should probably put it on here like immediately before everything's kind of settled into its final space. Yeah, because I think things are gonna shift as I transfer this over to this. Okay, first mistake is this is backwards. It doesn't fit like I made it like this. That fits, but it needs to be like this, which it's not. <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna squiggle it and see if it works somehow. a 
little freaky, but I think I'm just gonna fill in the gaps with some clay. And yeah, hopefully it's fine. comes a point in pretty much every throwdown build where I'm just like panicking and I can't even focus on like the cameras or anything because like the structural integrity of the build is at stake. I think crisis is averted. It needed a lot of um, patching, but I think, I think we're good to go and this is going to be able to sit and not dry out right away. So it should be able to like homogenize, hopefully. We are at four and a half hours left. I think to be happy with today, I would like to put the rooms in and build the roof. I need to make the roof first to know that I'm going to be able to make a removable roof before I bother putting in the rooms. But I really, really want to put in the rooms. I want it to be like this tiny little dollhouse with maybe some furniture and stuff inside. It would be really cool. There's three different directions that this roof goes in. There's one, two, three. You'd think like this house got added onto or something. It did not. It's just, it's a weird house. Where do you even start? break to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you've never heard about Squarespace before, they are a website you can go to to create your very own professional looking website. I've personally been using Squarespace ever since I started my online business and I'm still using them for my website today. There's a few things that I love about Squarespace, one of which is you can have an online store where you can sell either physical or digital products just like I do with my printable pottery templates. Two, I love their blog feature where you can create really nice looking blogs that feature text, photo, or even video. I personally use the blog feature to create a space on my website that features all of my video tutorials. And three, did you know that they also have a POS system that's a point of sale system so you can sell not only online but also in real life. So head to squarespace.com right now for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash pottery to the people for 10% off your very first website or domain. Now let's get back to the video. Please ignore this chaos. We have a roof. I think it looks really good on. The only thing is like, I don't know how removable it is because it doesn't like click into place. What I'm thinking about is the kiln situation because I'm worried about firing the roof and the base separate because the roof, unless I build some sort of structure to hold it up, is probably just gonna flop. There's so little holding it. It's so cute right now. I really don't want to ruin it. Like, should I, should I risk it basically? Should I risk making it removable and it could be like freaking amazing or it could, you know, fall apart and just be horrible? <laughs> or should I just play the safe route and um, attach it? And I think it will look really cute. I can just focus on the outside. I think, I think I'm gonna risk it. I mean, come on, of course I'm going to risk it. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it.
Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do for today. I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this time. I'm really happy with insides. Like it's looking really good. It's not perfectly proportionate and I am missing, we had like this tiny little water closet. Um, I just, I couldn't fit it <laughs> in basically. It is what it is. It's fine. We have the main bath in there. Tomorrow's list is going to be long. Um, I've got to do all of the details, all of the furniture, the windows, the landscaping. There's a whole list for tomorrow, but I think that this is really good. So what I'm doing and what I'm probably going to do for most of these throwdown videos is instead of six hours in one day, I'm going to do six hours over the course of two days, mostly because I do not have a drying room like they have on the show. So I'm just splitting this six hours into two days. So it's still gonna be the same time, just over the course of two days. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop. And then we have three hours and 15 minutes left for tomorrow. So see you then. Good morning. So goals for today are basically use up the rest of my time. <laughs> so I need to do all of the details, all of the sculpting. I want to add a lot of texture to the house. I need to add all of the windows. Right now I just have the two doors. There's actually one more door I need to add. And if I have time, I would love to add some furniture and like some wall stuff inside, like the fireplace and stuff like that. The one thing I'm not certain about is this is a porch here, right? And it's got a rail. So I don't know if I should add that or like how to add that. Such thin little bits there. Same with the back porch as well. Mm. And then the other thing is I need to find a way to get this to sit nicely on here. I want it to slot right into place. Like there's only one way to put it instead of like it being able to sit kind of off. It's sort of doing that already, but we can make it a little bit better. And I'm really happy that we still have just over three hours because I think it is going to take three hours. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, I'm not gonna show pictures of the house because my mom still lives there, but um, basically it's one of those classic suburban homes with the tar shingle roof and the faux wood like aluminum siding. So like these horizontal kind of siding and it's white, white with a gray roof. Do you wanna hear a sculpting secret? I mean, I'm not a sculptor, but here's my secret. If you sort of lean into that kind of impressionistic look that clay does so well, you're still gonna capture the essence of something without having to precisely go in there bit by bit because clay doesn't like to be perfect. Unless you're really, really fastidious, it's probably not going to turn out. I think we often find sculptures more charming when they're not perfect, but they still somehow capture the essence of what you're going for. That's my goal here. feel like it's done. I didn't need nearly that much time. Like you could fiddle with it forever, but it might be fine. This is the front of the house. Doo -doo. My dog always loved to hang out here. And then this was like the walkway up to the house. And then here's the back. 
We had the living room. There was the forest right here. I think I'm on my way to give you the grand tour until it's done completely. I'm really pleased. Um, so in order to keep with the crazy schedule that I've decided to, to get this done in one week, I'm going to let this dry under cloth tonight and then tomorrow it's already going into the kiln. Just like on the show, they rapid fire things. It's crazy. So I'm actually doing it slower than they do on the show. So tomorrow, tomorrow we can add the color. and. True to throw down fashion, we are going to be using underglazes. I have to say, I was very excited to see that in the Canadian show, they use more than just underglazes. They had like paint on glazes as well. So that's pretty cool. But in this video, it, it makes more sense for this project to actually use underglazes. So we're gonna try. Y'all know if you've been watching this for a while, I'm not the biggest fan of underglazes. I pretty much only use underglazes for these throwdown shows. So I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but we're gonna see. Okay, I am very nervous, not only because I used a fan to cool my kiln faster, I put the house into the kiln when it wasn't completely dry, hoping and praying that my firing curve is slow enough to fully dry it out. We are keeping a very tight schedule for this build because I'm trying to get these videos out within the week of the episode going live, which means I gotta rush the firings. Let's take a little peek. <laughs> okay. I don't usually like to crack the kiln so fast, but 120 is a little, it's a little too early to, to open the kiln, but I gotta get this glaze today, so. <laughs> ah, let's just open it. Ooh, that's some nice heat coming up. <laughs> okay, this is actually looking pretty good. Looks like we have a small crack, but so far, that's the only crack I see. I'm so relieved, honestly. <laughs> and my little dog is stable. Like everything's attached. Nothing flew off. None of the furniture popped off. That's that's a friggin' miracle. <laughs> um, so we do have two cracks. One is just where the wall is attached. I'm not really worried about it. One is on the outside. It's kind of a structural crack. It's very, very thin. So I'm hoping it's gonna be fine. The glaze can kind of fill it in. Been thinking about how I'm going to glaze this and I think I've come up with a solution because when you put something in the kiln, especially at a high temperature, which we'll do for the glaze fire, structures like this tend to sag. Like it's not vertical enough to support itself. Like this is, this is fine. It's like almost flat, but it's not quite flat. So what happens is it tends to kind of just go bleh. This is what I'm worried about because I want these to fit. I want this to fit as nicely as it does now. So what I figured I'm going to do is I'm just going to not glaze the bottom because who cares? And I will leave just this edge here unglazed. I think that's fine, like visually, because the house is going to be white. The clay is white. It's like a slightly different white than the clay. I think it's going to disguise itself well enough that it's not going to be like horrible. <laughs> Then I can fire it like this. And so any movement that happens, these two pieces will move together, theoretically, hopefully, and it won't warp. This does risk cracking though, because if like one wants to move and the other won't let it move, then that part might crack. This is, it's, this is definitely the riskier option, but I honestly think it's like the most likely option to be what we want it to be. So I'm, I'm clearly a fan of going for the riskier option. <laughs> This is just looking fabulous. So, okay, I'm going to use Amico underglazes. You guys know I've used these before in the other throwdown videos. These are just standard underglazes. I use Amico. It doesn't matter what underglazes you use. Duncan is also really great, I hear. There's like, there's a couple of different brands that are well known and very nice. I've got this palette. I can also mix the colors together to make more colors. But what I'm thinking is I want to paint the grass and the bushes, green, I want, I'm gonna need to combine this green that I have with 
maybe some yellow and some white to lighten it up. I want like this nice grassy green. The roof is going to be gray because the roof is gray. Should we start? Let's go. How did we like the show, guys? What did, what did you think? I thought it was very good. Um, overall, I really liked it. They did stay true to the original like quite closely, which is what I expected, and I'm really glad that they did. I mean, they did put their own twist on it, for sure. I do think that the British people are better at making like wholesome, a wholesome show than folks from North America. Um, I don't know what it is, but there's like this coziness <laughs> to people from that area that um, I think us North Americaners don't do so well. By the way, you guys might not know this, but I'm actually like part Canadian. Um, I, I grew up, born and raised in the US. I'm from Wisconsin, from where this house is from. <laughs> um, but uh, my mom's from Canada and I've got a lot of family in Canada. They're all from Calgary. I did come very close to moving there at one point. Instead, I moved to Germany. But yeah, I do have something of a hot take about Seth Rogen. Um, because of his fame, he definitely outshined the judges and the, I guess the judges, like the, oopsies. This is my karma for talking shit. The folks who are judging the Pottery Throwdown are some of the best potters in North America. And Seth Rogen, while he's a great potter, um, while he cares about, he's passionate about his craft and he genuinely has like a really cool perspective to bring to pottery, um, he got like twice as much screen time as like all the other, like literally everyone else. Like he was on the screen, in my opinion, like way too much. And that's my hot take. I think that like I, what I understand, or at least my hypothesis, is that the show wouldn't have happened without him. So I'm incredibly grateful to him. Like he produced the show, like maybe he paid for it. I have no idea. Um, and it's really, really cool that it got brought to Canada. And I'm curious to hear what you think about the show in general. Like by the time this video comes out, the second episode will be up and I'm dying to see it. They didn't even give us a next time. I have no idea what the new project is gonna be, so I'm excited and nervous. Please cross all of your fingers and toes for me for this one because I really want this one to work. Oh, it's so hot. 
I'm really scared, but we should try and take off the roof. Okay, it's a little stuck. Stuck-ish. Okay. Ta-da! Oh my God! This is so cute! <laughs> I need to show you guys more details. So here on the left we have the living room and the kitchen. So this is kind of like the entry area. Here's the front door. And then back here is all the bedrooms. So we have my brother's bedroom, my bedroom, and my parents' bedroom. So here's the main bath back here. So here's the front of the house, the view from the street, little beagle. And I love this detail, the flowers here. We always had really bright, beautiful flowers. Off the kitchen, she's still there. Look at this detail. I painted these little flowers here in the living room and I put some purple spots on the sofa. And then I did one other painting in the bathroom. This is the back of the house. Here's the back balcony that no one ever went on. We do have some cracking here, unfortunately. And then the cracking that we talked about earlier is here. The one in the front seems to have vanished, which is awesome. And then there was, yeah, one more. So there was too much tension basically with this structure, but you can't really notice it. You're not looking at it. It's not distracting. I think the biggest one is back here. Yeah, no one's gonna be looking at that. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I think it looks so good. Like, I mean, you guys don't know what my house looks like, but this is this is what my house looks like. This, it's like so cool. I was, I had so much doubts that this was going to turn out as something that actually looks like my house. But I think with like the bushes and also the walkway is like such a distinctive element of the house that I grew up in. Of course my dog, oh, she's so cute. I love this, I love this so much. And I didn't say this before because um, I didn't wanna jinx it, but I am visiting my family next week. It's my mom's birthday. My mom, the one who lives in this house still. And I think that this is like the perfect gift for her. I'm so, I'm so excited. She's gonna, she's gonna flip. I did give her some hints that she was getting something like this because I had to ask her for all these photos of the house because I couldn't, I couldn't rely on my memory alone. I'm so glad that I ended up putting stuff inside and I made the top removable. That just adds like such a cool element to it. And we're always going to, you know, the house might get sold at some point, like in the near future. And we don't know like, if the next buyer would be interested in keeping it up because it is almost, it's all, it's 90 years old. It's almost a century old at this point. <laughs> and so it's a little, it's a little rickety, you know, <laughs> but I'm so happy that we have this as like a keepsake for the house that me and my family grew up in or my brothers. Oh, okay. This was a, such a sentimental one. I'm so excited for next week. I have no idea what's gonna happen, but I hope that you guys like this video. Um, I'm so excited to be embarking on this series of the throwdown. If you guys are liking what you're watching, please like do all the things that helps me out. Like if you do the like button, if you subscribe, all that stuff, share the video on social media, that helps me out so much. And that really shows me that, okay, people are liking this series, so I will continue. That's it for me. Have a great day, friends, and I'll see you next week with the next challenge. Bye.